Hi there, I'm Kara, and on this episode of Trails West Travel Magazine, 48 hour road trip, we are in Alliance, Nebraska. First thing you'll notice when visiting Alliance is the streets in the downtown area, which are paved with brick, making visiting Alliance a memorable and sometimes bumpy experience. Founded in 1888 as a railroad town, Alliance represented the joining of two railroads, the Burlington and Missouri River Railroad, and the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad. The town quickly grew to its strategic location as a transportation hub. Beautiful natural landscapes surround Alliance. Agriculture has always played a significant role in the economy of Alliance and is known for its production of crops such as corn, wheat, and sugar beets. Today, Alliance is known for its tight-knit community, its hospitality, and of course, Carhenge. The idea that this structure exists is a mystery to some, a joke to others, as much as Stonehenge is to the archaeologist studying its history. Yet here it is, standing on the lonesome prairie high on the plains of western Nebraska. The history of the monument, which is sure to baffle future archaeologists, is a beautiful one that tells the story of the loyalty and commitment of a loving family. Jim Reindeers, who experimented with artistic creations throughout his life, is the artist behind Carhenge. Jim had the opportunity to study the design and purpose of Stonehenge while living in England. On his return to the United States in the summer of 1987, with the help of friends and family, Carhenge was erected as a lasting and enduring memorial to Jim's father, who lived on the property where Carhenge stands. And shortly after, the concept of recreating Stonehenge using abandoned vehicles was adopted. Five years later, the family reunited and built the structure in June 1987. A dedication was held on the summer solstice of that year, where songs, poetry, and a play was performed, which family members had written in honor of Jim's father. 39 automobiles represent the same proportions as Stonehenge and are erected inside a circle measuring approximately 96 feet in diameter. The autos are held upright in pits, some over five feet deep, with trucks end down. Care was made to form the arches welded in place by connecting the automobiles in different angles. The sculpture is painted with light gray paint to represent the stone's monoliths. A 1962 caddy represents the heel stone. Carhenge is one of our favorite places to visit in western Nebraska and one of North America's most exciting and unique structures. It is uniquely Nebraskan and draws over 100,000 visitors to the park each year from every corner of the planet. Following an enjoyable experience filled with delightful moments and capturing precious memories at Carhenge, we're now on the hunt for a quick bite. Our search led us to Vintage Espresso and Antiques, a charming establishment in downtown Alliance, where you'll discover a delicious cup of coffee and cuisine, and a treasure trove of unique antiques, some of which are one of a kind. My name is Suzanne Sabbath, and I am here at the Vintage Coffee Shop in Alliance, Nebraska. We make all kinds of fancy coffee drinks from cappuccinos to brevets, to lattes, iced, hot, uh, blended, anything that you want, any combination of flavors that you would like. Um, we also do our lunch, one lunch every day. We serve lunch from 11 to one, Monday through Friday. We have a pretty wide menu, so it's not the same thing on every day except for Wednesday. Wednesday is always chicken fried steak meal every Wednesday. Frequently, we have Taco Tuesday, which is very popular with our customers. We're not a big antique store, but we, we do have some smaller things. Um, Fenton glass is one of the things that we have. We have some, it's hus, um, like the vases and stuff. Um, it changes all the time because when something sells, we have to put something new out. So it's, it's always changing. So it's a good thing to stop in and see what what is new, what you might pick up. 
Um, usually it's kind of a neat store to come when you are traveling because the things are not huge. So if you find something, it's going to fit in your car that you might be able to fit it in your suitcase or something because you don't have to make room in your car for a chair. You know? So it's kind of nice. Um, we do sell coins too, so that's kind of neat. A lot of people come in and buy the coins and um, we have uh, rocks and gems and minerals. Uh, a lot of them it's, it's almost like a museum here so they're really fun to look at um, but some of them are for sale so some of those things you'd like to pick up. Living in Alliance is like having 8,000 family members. Um, it is everybody helps everybody out here in this town. Um, everybody knows everybody. Um, it's just a really good wholesome place to live. After devouring a plateful of heavenly deep fried bread tacos, we waddled our way to a shopping adventure. Our quest led us to the fabulous boutique known as Highway 2 Threads in the heart of downtown Alliance. This place isn't just any ordinary shop. It's like stumbling upon a treasure trove of quirky Nebraska fashion and accessories fit for intrepid travelers or folks who simply love shopping local. If you're looking for the perfect souvenir from Western Nebraska or an excuse to splurge, Highway 2 Threads has got you covered. I'm Elizabeth Fritzler and I own Highway 2 Threads in Alliance, Nebraska. My idea for the store came at, uh, in, actually from Baird, Nebraska, the fall market. Um, Tanya Verbeck, that has the vault coffee shop, um, has her fall market every year. And I went there with, um, and just got felt so inspired um, by the other businesses there, the vendors that were there, and and so that was kind of where the idea originated from. We just hope to be an inspiration for other people within our own community to um, go for it, like just do your thing, like whatever whatever is exciting to you, bring that, find a need within our community and fill it. The store is just a collection of all my favorite things. So that was kind of where it started. Um, we have banties, uh, jackets, jewelry, custom-made jewelry, feathers. One of our best-selling shirts is, um, I'm with the hippies and the cowboys. So we, I like to say that the store collides somewhere in between that. A little hippie, a little cowboy. Uh, a little rocker chick, um, somewhere in there. As we bid farewell to the bustling streets of downtown Alliance, a sudden thirst for adult libations gripped us. Lo and behold, our savior came in the form of the recently birthed Dead Unicorn Society. Situated three miles from the mythical wonder that is Carhenge, this bar and music venue boasts an atmosphere so delightfully eerie, it'll haunt your dreams in the best way possible. It's a place where the macabre meets merriment. We can't help but sing its praises, for it has secured a prestigious spot on our list of must-visit locations in western Nebraska. So I had some trouble des describing this place, so I asked some of the patrons to give me some adjectives. Um, you can write on the bar, these amazing markers. We came up with liminal, magical, enchanted, hollowed, inviting, dreamy, unique, cultured, ambiance, dilettantish, which he's going to describe. <laughs> Dilettante, being Megan, someone who's well versed in the arts. All arts, magical, um, painting, music. Give me some other arts. Magic. I Stamps. I said that. <laughs> Stamps. Stamp collecting. Stamp. Stamp collecting. Energy reading. Yeah. Tarot. Why the name Dead Unicorn Society? I get that all the time. First and foremost, I can just tell you, it's a weird name that nobody's gonna forget. Secondly, uh, we're just home to a collective group of oddities and curiosities and old relics that nobody cares about anymore, but we do. And uh, 
So we just decided to build a venue that provides space for all these old things and they're usable. We have a cash register over there from the late 1800s that we've completely refurbished and we're actually using. We have an old Victrola machine, same era. Um, we're just taking these old things and giving them new life. <laughs> so there's a lot of talk about dead unicorn, but it's really, uh, it's really we're breathing new life into some old things in here. Car Hinge, it's neat, it's a cool place. It's right over there, so if you're going there, you just stop here and have a drink. A few people walk in, you know, they see a moon and a star on the door, or they see skulls hanging from the ceiling or shit like that, and they, right away, they're thinking, what kind of dumb things are these people up to? And you paint the outside wall black, and I guess that gets people going for some silly reason. You know, and I guess it kind of has a whole gothic feel really to this place. If you come to the Dead Unicorn Society, you're going to find a group of people that are just here for a good time. This is a nice, chill, relaxing place. We're not trying to just be a bar or a restaurant. We're really here to support the arts, and so the whole experience is art. I mean, everything you see, we've taken into account the lighting. Um, the, the sound is top notch. Um, the people that come here are all unicorns. Everybody is unique and different and just here to be themselves. And that's the main thing that we're here for, is to provide a space for people in our community to be themselves and enjoy themselves when they walk in the door. Get ready for our next adventure as we head to Potter, Nebraska, where we'll be visiting the renowned Potter Sundry. This iconic establishment is famous for its delectable tin roof sundae, a Western Nebraska delicacy with a rich history spanning the country. Don't miss out on this next stop as Trails West Magazine continues to explore in our 48-hour road trip through Western Nebraska.